Are you kidding me right now? I just set my keys right here on top of the steering wheel and they fell down. They fell down in there. And they didn't they didn't come out. Oh no. Are you kidding me? Why would it be designed this way? Who would not put their keys right there? Yeah, this is not good, guys, at all. I've poked around the steering wheel everywhere I can see, and there is nowhere. <sighs> Why me? Why me? See, it's down there. Oh my gosh, there they are right there! Look! You can see them! Yeah, I have no idea. I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of a tool or contraption. That's ridiculous. Actually, you know what? I've got an idea. This is why I have a tactical back scratcher. You know what? You can see it goes through to the floor. So all I gotta do is knock them through. Yeah, look, look, there's my toes, there's my toes. All I gotta do is knock the keys down there, they'll fall through, it'll work perfect. All right, we're gonna put the camera on, uh, on toe cam mode here and we'll see the keys fall out if I'm successful. All right, come on. Yes, okay. We're back in business. I think that is a terrible, terrible design flaw. I will be writing directly to Ford and making them aware of it. I had no idea. So what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Fuzz Fam channel. Is anybody even still here? We're not putting out videos very often. So who's gonna stick around and watch a YouTube channel uh, that puts out one video every few weeks randomly? Not me. Obviously, as you guys can tell, we're in the police car. We're not in the studio this time. One of you guys recommended that. We used to do videos in the car all the time. Then we started doing them in the office. So we thought we'd try it again coming back to the car. Shake it up a little bit. I also thought it would serve as good proof of life, if you will, that the car is fine. I'm in it, it's running, you can see, everything's okay. I treat my cars well. Maybe I'll pan the camera around a little bit inside the cockpit so you guys can see everything is in good working order and still functional. Of course, we still got our flagship marker, uh, Patrol Pig is doing really good. Computer is still here and goes up and down on the screen. You can see that works just fine. Radio and buttons all still here. You can tell they look uh, like they're in good working order. Everything's okay there. Uh, brownie brittle, check. <laughs> Flashlight charging, spare burner phone, uh, all this other crap, vest, yes. Citations and paperwork that I haven't turned in yet, proof that I actually do work. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, things are good, guys. The car's fine and uh, I'm still here. A lot of craziness going on in the world right now, obviously, a lot of you are at home. Professionally, obviously, I'm not quarantined. I can't work from home. I've gotta be out and about like all the other uh, first responders and doctors and everybody taking care of people. There is a lot going on with all the coronavirus stuff. I don't think I'm gonna spend a ton of time on this video talking about how that's affected us and how that's affected my job. I'll just say that calls for service have been just as consistent, if not a little bit of an uptick. They've just changed a little bit in the nature of the calls. We have had, as you could probably guess, a lot more domestics. People are stuck at home with their families and they're realizing what it's like to be with their families 24 seven. And unfortunately, it's leading to a lot of arguments, disagreements, and sometimes fights. That's so good. Procedurally, things have changed. Like our dispatch now asks everybody that calls for any kind of call if they're having any flu symptoms and then they let us know if the answer is yes to that. They've hooked us up with several different pieces of personal protective equipment and masks. We get plenty of those if we need to refill and use them. Our jail has changed their intake procedures. They actually come out with a deputy with a uh, thermometer and they check everybody's temperature before they come in. If you have any kind of a fever, you're not getting into the jail or any kind of coughing or anything like that. Hasn't really affected me because I don't usually take people to jail anyway. So a lot has changed. I will say I am absolutely grateful that I am still employed. I know a lot of people, including probably some people watching this video, do not have jobs right now because of everything going on. I gotta find a place to set this camera. I'm just holding it. I don't like this. Put you here? Is that as low as that goes? Nope, that's not good. All right, so we're gonna talk about a few calls for service, talk about some stories from the road per usual, and at the end of the video, we'll look at a few questions and comments you guys had on the last Benny on the Beat. First call I wanna talk about is this one last night. I'd mentioned that I went to jail for the first time in a long time, was helping this other officer. So we got a call of a car that had kids in it dealing drugs at a city park. And they said it was a constant problem. I don't know if that means constant problem with drug dealing at the park or this specific car with these specific kids. But usually when we get these calls, to be honest, most of the times we get there and they're gone. I mean, drug dealers and criminals usually are smart enough to know that they don't stay in one place for long, increasing the chances that the cops get called, right? Seems like common sense, but every now and then, <laughs> every now and then we have those special customers that uh, like to make it easy on us. So we pulled up and sure enough, there's a car matching the description. So we walked up to talk to them and obviously something was up right off the bat because super, super sketch. They were all freaked out. They were all acting way nervous, stuff to hide. 
uh, it's tough to explain if you're not a police officer. Those of you that are cops, you know what I'm talking about. Like it was instant, okay, something's up. Obviously we got something in the car. They've got warrants, they're nervous about something. So my partner was on the other side of the car talking to the passenger. I walked up on the driver's side and from his vantage point, he couldn't see the lap or what was on the lap of the driver, but I could. Right there in plain sight, he was trying to cover it up, was a big fat bag of what looked like marijuana. We don't have any like special hand signals or anything that we really use to let people know. So I just mouthed in his lap, in his lap. I said something like that. He got it, he understood what I was saying. So we instantly diverted from what he was gonna do, came right to the driver, pulled him out, put him up into the uh, the A-frame of the, of the door once it's open so we had him pinned in a good spot got him in handcuffs and got the drugs recovered. So this turned into what ended up being like, I wanna say a five hour nightmare of a call. Long story short, we were just dealing with the driver. We didn't know if there was going to be other issues with the passengers, but we identified them, made sure they didn't have warrants. We were gonna search the car incident to arrest because we arrested the driver for drugs and the grab area per current search and seizure, Supreme Court rulings is the entire interior of the car. So we're not necessarily searching the people in the car. We may Terry frisk them for weapons, because again, weapons and drugs go together, but we're gonna search the car. So we started pulling them out individually, and then immediately as they got out, found that they had drugs on them as well. Like one of them had a big, huge bulge in his pant pocket. It was super, super obvious. Uh, the other gal got out. I don't know how we found hers, if it fell out of her backpack when she got out and brought her bag with her. Anyway, all three of them had a ton of drugs on them, and they were all individually wrappered individually separated for sale. So now of course you have possession with intent to distribute in a city park. No toleration for that whatsoever. Uh-uh, not cool. You're going to jail, boy. So we went to the jail. I had two people in the back of my car. Every department's gonna have different policies on transport of prisoners. Some people can only take one. Some people can take two. Some people can fit three. As many people as you can fit in the back, you can take them to jail. When I first started, I actually had a patrol car that had no uh, gate didn't have any kind of a divider and we put prisoners up front. Got them down to jail, got them tucked in. Oh yeah, and the girl, the female I transported, she had to go to the bathroom. Really, really bad. And people will always say that. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. She really did have to go. Fortunately, she did not go in my car. As soon as we got in the car to leave to the jail, I turned on the radio. The song that came on, I kid you not, was uh, Celebration. <laughs> They actually had a pretty good attitude about it. They were laughing and joking and uh, couldn't believe that was the song that came on as we were taking them to jail. But as soon as we got to the jail, she got in there and she peed her pants. <laughs> Next call. This was a traffic accident. Pretty good traffic accident, actually. It was a report of uh, a rollover. Uh, there was a larger gentleman that was still pinned in one of the cars. Three cars involved. Uh, multiple injuries, so ran down to help on that. I ended up doing some traffic control. News media showed up and took some pictures of the stuff, and some of you guys actually noticed that news article, noticed me in the background, and sent me some clips and pictures asking if I was actually working. They couldn't believe I was actually working. Thanks a lot for that, guys. The biggest help to somebody doing an accident is trying to find all the necessary paperwork, like finding the insurance documents, the registration, uh, the driver's licenses of the folks involved, especially if they're getting loaded up to go to whatever hospital. Turns out what happened on this, what caused it, and this is a common occurrence, causes tons of accidents. The car in the middle on this accident was heading southbound on this busy road and made a left turn in front of oncoming traffic. Didn't judge the distance from the oncoming cars, didn't yield to them well enough. Turned left, caused the collision, which pushed those two cars into a car on a side street that was waiting to turn right and to head out. And the car in the middle was the one that turned left and he ended up pinned between them. And I think he was the one that was worse off. Everybody survived this accident. There were some decent injuries. Uh, most of them were transported. All the cars were totaled. One of them was brand new, which sucks. Uh, let's see, what else? We did have a, uh, a little earthquake. It was a moderate earthquake. And no, I didn't cause the earthquake. I wasn't jumping on the trampoline. I think a few of you guys commented and thought that was like the cause of it. I was laying in bed, actually using the snooze button, not wanting to get up. I had an overtime shift coming up and that finally got me out of bed. I was really grateful because I probably would have slept through and been late to my assignment. So some of you may be accustomed to earthquakes. I've been through one or two small ones before up when I lived in the Northwest, but this was the biggest one. This was the biggest one we'd ever had. It didn't affect me at work much other than they were on tactical alert the whole day. I didn't come into shift till later because I'm on swing shift. By the time I got in, they had kind of settled down and they were just cleaning up some of the smaller buildings that had fallen down, bricks in the streets and stuff like that. The experts believe that's just a precursor to a much bigger earthquake here in the Utah area that is well overdue. So someday 
that's gonna happen. The big one, they call it around here, the big one. Once again, no, the big one is not a nickname for me. When that happens, I have no idea what it's gonna be like. I mean, we drill and we talk about it. If it happens while I'm at work, that's gonna be a long shift. Let's just say I hope Chick-fil-A stays open. It's nothing call related, but I will mention that uh, I got approved and got a voucher with our quartermaster system with my department to get some new uniforms the other day. It's been a little while since I've upgraded and got new uniforms. We got approved for some new 511 tactical pants versus the old school like LAPD ones that we've been wearing. And word on the street from those using it is they're very, very nice because they have much more room and flexibility in uh, certain areas of the pants, which is fantastic because the ones we've been using are very, very restrictive. That explains a lot. I'll, I'll show you a tour maybe once I get them, I'll, uh, I'll let you check them out. It's gonna make your boy, it's gonna make your boy even more uh, appealing, looking good than he already is. What? There we go, slipping, slipping hard into the uh, no script zone. Okay, anyway, continuing. Tyson Price, have you ever prank arrested anyone or prank pulled over anyone or played any pranks on someone while on duty? That wouldn't work, it wouldn't work out. We don't live in a day and age where we can really uh, mess around like that with people. Uh, maybe maybe there was a time uh, when it was a little easier to do that, but right now I'd, I would honestly just get in trouble and probably lose my job. Kenneth Warner, if you could have any kind of car, not just your typical police car, as your patrol car, what would it be? Ooh, I think we've talked about this one before. You know, I had the, uh, I had the supercar video way back in the day where I talked about my interest and appreciation of Lamborghinis and supercars. I don't know, it'd be super, super obvious and not conspicuous whatsoever. So I, I used to say I'd want a Lambo, like an unmarked Lamborghini, but I don't know if that would work out so well for, uh, for police work. I mean, I would stick out so much. It would be so obvious. I think if I was a highway patrolman or a state trooper on the freeway just doing traffic enforcement, Lamborghini, unmarked Lambo, all day long, that would be awesome. In my line of work as a police officer in the city, that's a tough one, honestly. I, man, maybe an old school Crown Vic going back to uh, the roots. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. I don't have a set answer for you on that. Good old Skip Trace 9501. How much does the academy training cost or how much are you paid during training? Yeah, good question. Totally depends on whether you're putting yourself through or being sponsored by an agency. We talked a little bit about this before. I self-sponsored when I went through. I paid for my own training and it cost me roughly five, $6,000 or so. That was back in the dark ages, a long time ago. If you're sponsored these days, if you have someone paying for your training, then you're making your wage as a police officer. So you're making your starting rate, hourly, whatever it is, it's actually a pretty good deal. Phil Fortin, agree, the worst cruiser ever. My K9 Impala was always breaking down. I was so happy when the engine finally blew up. Yes, validation out of the mouth of multiple witnesses. That's what I'm talking about. It's not just me, guys. Bob Wang, yes, what's up, Bob Wang? Do you have any interest in becoming a sergeant someday? Bob, there was a point in my career where I thought I would. I was interested in promoting and working my way up, but those days have long come and gone. I don't have the time horizon. I've got a certain number of years left on the job. It's not sufficient enough for me to really get anywhere by promotion. When you promote in my department as a sergeant, you go back to the very bottom of seniority in the sergeant pool. So you have crap shifts, uh, bad hours, you don't get to pick your schedule really. You get an old sergeant supervisor car. Like I, I'd, I'd go backwards in almost every way other than a few bucks more an hour. Uh, not worth it. Everybody, please stay healthy. Please stay safe. We'll get through this crap going on with the uh, coronavirus. After this, it's just gonna be the next you know, big crisis. There's gonna be something. So stay resilient, stay positive. Stay subscribed to FuzzFam. Everybody have a great week and we'll see you next time. I'm gonna probably have to take it to a dealership or something. Good.